wonder, this is Atlas here and welcome to the <laughs> and happy Halloween. Today I'm going to be reacting and breaking down a song from the uh, Dark Souls original soundtrack. I, I believe this is the first game. This is a song from the first game and it's going to be uh, Win uh, Lord of Cinder. This is an actual request by Ray the Fox and he says react to Dark Souls OST especially Wind's theme and Orstein and Smoke uh, well thank you very much Ray for your request uh, this actually Dark Souls has been uh, has been getting traction quite a lot in other comments uh, the thing is that uh, many of those comments were only stating that I mean, it wasn't like a very open request, you know, it, though the comments were not specific into which song they, they wanted me to do. I thank you, for, I thank you also for those uh, requests also, but I would like to ask of you if you would be so kind to be very specific in the, in the songs that you want and which uh, specific video game it would be, okay? It's just easier for people to upvote your request and easier for me to pick a song, okay? So without further ado, onward! Okay, Win, Lord of Cinder, boom! Okay, starting right off the bat with a piano. It's doing the same thing like in the... I love what the, the left hand is doing in the piano. Staying note right there accomplishes a lot of things. This song is playing a lot with the tension also, very, very much like it happening in the Bloodborne uh, song. And 
it fades out. That was it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I was not expecting that the song was going to be like a, like a, an isolated uh, piano track. But I really dig that they, they did that. Well, actually, I see that it's a single composer, it says in the video. Um, I'm just gonna save the commentary for the breakdown. So let's break it down. Okay, so there are a couple of different things that I want to talk about this particular track. Maybe the first one that I would like to mention is that uh, piano is probably uh, my, my second favorite instrument. The first one being the guitar because, well, that's the one I've played for so many years. But uh, if I would choose to um, learn another instrument, it would be the piano. The piano has such a sound and, I mean, such a wide range for you to explore uh, that, um, I mean, it's just so endearing to me uh, as an instrument, I mean, the sound, of course. But uh, other than my personal preference for, for, the, for the instrument, I want to talk about the tension that is happening in this track. Because in this track, the, almost the same thing happens uh, with what the what, with what happened with the Bloodborne track that I did previously, which was uh, Ludwig, Ludwig the Curse and the Holy Blade, and in that track as well as this and as well as in this one, the the tension is not building up. To something specific. Uh, the tension is always building and releasing in brief periods of time. So in other songs that you might have heard, I can't really pick one in a specific uh, to, to, to be as an example, let's say. But um, you know, there's music that uh, plays a section and that section is kind of building or, or building or building and building but it builds the tension so long that when you get the, the, when, the when the other section comes and, and, and the transition signals you what, that something is big is about to happen then the climax is more amplified because you uh, were building that tension all over at the previous section which is a long section right but in this particular track, uh, Win uh, Lord of Cinder, you can hear that the piano is playing a lot with the dynamics of, 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 the, um, of the touch of, of, the, of the player. You know, the, whoever uh, uh, played this or, uh, well, I don't know if this was, uh, you know, played by human or it was um, programmed because believe me nowadays there's uh, music libraries that are very hard to distinguish from, from the real thing but uh, assuming that is a real person or uh, it, it was the composer who programmed it I guess what I'm trying to say is that the dynamics that are used in this particular track are uh, referred as to the intensity of how the player play the keys, you know, or the how the composer program though that intensity on the notes. Uh, in 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 digital audio workstations, it's called velocity. But uh, I think that in in music notation or something like that. There's various degrees of that. It's like uh, 40 for loud, uh, piano for quiet. And there's a, a bunch of, of other ones like pianissimo and uh, mezzo, mezzo forte, fortissimo. There's other, other, other you know, uh, dynamics that, uh, I, that gives you an spectrum of how uh, loud you perceive. Uh, 
as a, uh, as a listener of, of the music, you, you, uh, that those dynamics just play with how loud you perceive the notes. Uh, but it's actually how they are played, if they are played very hard or very softly. And those specific, those specific dynamics are the ones that play a role into how the tension in the music, and specifically of course in this track, builds and releases uh, in brief periods of time. And that's exactly what I said. Uh, I mean, uh, the, the Bloodborne uh, song also had exactly that. But not only that, it is also the chord progression that there is, because there's a lot of minor chords in this particular track. Minor chords are, some of, are my favorite, probably some of my favorite uh, chords that, that there are. In black metal, like E minor is like the quintessential um, chord there ever is and there ever was for the type of music. But um, uh, yeah, a lot of uh, minor chords and minor, minor chords are very uh, sinister, um, you know, it sounds dark, which of course it's the, the very definition of what dark souls would evoke for you even if you haven't played the, the game. You know, just hearing the name of the, of the, of the game uh, gives you the vibe that is something grim and sinister, right? And it translates in, or, and the music translates the meaning of that through, uh, well, in this case, this song and the, the chord progressions that the composer chose, and there, in which there's a lot of minor chords, just to feed that uh, feeling of darkness and grim. So the tension is very much related to how you perceive the loudness of the notes and uh, how they are played. You know, some of the chords that are used here, I mean, uh, probably most of them are played in, in an arpeggiated way, like they are not... You don't hear the chord played at the same time, it's like each individual note uh, plays a role into the, let's say, the, the mood of the song, the general mood of the song. Because if they were played like, uh, you know, all the notes of, from, the, from the chord were played at once, then it would be a, a completely different feeling. And it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't create that tension that you need because when you play the full chords, it's, it's like you're giving you're giving the tension away just to have the climax of the thing already. And uh, I, I actually did also uh, a breakdown for a Final Fantasy uh, song called Dancing Mad, and in Dancing Mad there's a lot of these really lush full chords, and they have a different effect. They don't build the they, they don't build the tension so much. Uh, but they create like a, like a sort of resolution in some parts. Now, speak, speaking specifically about the song, because it, of course this breakdown is about the song, uh, the reason why there is no full, like very lush chords and, and they are, let's say, more spread out in the way they are played, because like I said before, um, the, uh, the, the, uh, the individual notes that are from that chord are played separately. Now the section that comes after it's more relaxed and, and it's not so much about the tension but uh, about um, creating like a landscape in which you don't feel like that back and forth in between the, the building and releasing of the tension that have the, the, the was part of the first section of the song, but then it, that then that part repeats again, and it's like a little bit of a break, you know. It's like the composer didn't want you to be like that back and forth with the tension because because maybe he he thought it would be exhausting for you to to have to be in that game of of, of what's going on. Okay, well, it's not coming. Oh, wait, 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 it's building again. No, no, no. no. 
because you know it's it's done in such brief amount, in, uh, you know, brief periods of time, in, in like in short short bursts, that uh, maybe the the composer was like, okay, I'm not going to have the <laughs> the listener just you know tensing all the time and releasing because it can be either frustrating or um, let's say uh, exhausting. So I think I'm gonna give this track a high silver badge. I really like what the uh, what the piano did with the dynamics on the lower register of, of, of the piano, you know, the bass notes and so forth. Um, what I felt that what I, where I, where I didn't feel so much, uh, you know, seduced by the song was in the melody. And although the the melody has certainly some uh, interesting uh, harmonies uh, in the composition. Uh, I was more into the, you know, what, what what the left hand of the piano was doing. I, I wasn't so much invested in, in the uh, in the in the melody so much. The harmonies were cool, but the melody itself was not quite there for me, at least. So yeah, thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like and share it with your friends. Also, please don't forget to visit my subscribe store and my Teespring shop. And of course, Exmi Ilo, Nihil Feet.